Hello children. Today we are starting chapter number 8, how do organism reproduces. Before asking ourselves this question, how do organism reproduces, let us ask ourselves one question, why do organism reproduces? Why? Why does the organism have to reproduce? Children, we have studied in the previous section that excretion, transportation, respiration and digestion are very important life processes which are important for the existence of life for carrying out the life processes. But reproduction, when we consider reproduction, we did not study reproduction as a life process. Why? Because it, does, it is not really necessary for existence of a particular organism, right? For existence of particular individual organism, reproduction is not necessary. The organisms do live without reproducing, right? So why is it important to reproduce? Pause the video for a second and comment your answers below. Why do organisms reproduce? I hope you have commented your answer below and I am going to answer for your this particular question that is why do organisms reproduce? Children, if a particular generation, let us consider a generation of bacteria, if they does not reproduce, does not give birth, what happens to that particular generation? That will be the end of that particular type of bacteria. Understood? So, for the existence of particular species on the surface of earth, it is necessary to reproduce. So, reproduction is a process which keeps that particular species alive on the earth. So, that is why reproduction is important. So, let us learn the definition of reproduction. Reproduction is a process in which the organisms give birth to young one which is morphologically and genetically similar to itself. I will write the definition for you. Reproduction. It is a process. in which it is the process in which an organism give birth to to its young one its young one which is morphologically and genetically similar to itself, similar to itself. So let us read once again, reproduction is a process in which the an organism gives birth to its young one which is morphologically and genetically similar to itself. So what do you mean by morphologically and genetically? So morphology means external appearance of an organism. You might have seen that you look alike to your father or mother. One of your parents will be similar. You will be similar to your father or mother which, which in the morphologically means external appearance. And genetically is genetic makeup, genetic buildup of an organism. It may be blood group, it may be the diseases which we will be inheriting by our parents. That is genetic character. And another one is physical appearance which is called as morpho morphology. The physical appearance is called morphology. We will be similar to our parents both genetically and morphologically. Hope this definition is clear to you. So the young one which is produced by the parent will be morphologically and genetically similar to the parent. So. We will study the, we will not need the exact copy of our parents. There will be similarity. I have see, written the word here. We will be similar, but we are not the exact copies of our parents. If we are exact copies of our parents, we will be called as clones. I will write it here, clone. Clone is an exact copy of its parent. So we are not clones. We are not exact copies. That is why I have used the word similar. Hope this definition was clear to you. Let us learn why the variations. We are not exact copies, right? So there is some variation from our parents. Why the variation is important? See, in the environment, there will be particular changes with respect to, to the temperature, wind speed, etc. because of the global warming and other reasons. For example, if the temperature of the earth is go on increasing due to global warming and a particular bacteria is living which will live in the lower temperatures. For example, see 24 degrees Celsius, it is very comfortable to live. Due to global warming, it has increased up to 30 percent. 
so it will not be able to survive it will die off so in that case there will be a certain changes in its body which are called as variations variations are the changes that occurs in the organisms so variations are important for the adaptation to the changing climate so variations are re really important that's why we are not the exact copies of our parents we are not the clones so this similarity is up to certain percentage only we are not 100% similar to same to our parents so variations is also important okay next we are going to study how many types of reproduction are are there okay so reproduction is of two types one is asexual reproduction and another one is sexual reproduction so in case of asexual reproduction there is involvement of only one parent so in the asexual type of reproduction we see there is only one parent but in case of sexual reproduction there will be involvement of two parents so essentially there is need of only one organisms for the asexual reproduction whereas we need two two types of organisms which are sexually different which are sexually different will be needed for the sexual mode of reproduction there are still many modes of reproduction in the asexual mode of reproduction that is asexual reproduction can be carried out with the help of fission fragmentation regeneration and etc i'm going to teach this asexual reproduction one by one so i'm going to repeat the types of reproduction there are two types of reproduction one is asexual and another one is sexual one is asexual and another one is sexual see in the asexual reproduction we need only one organism there will be involvement of only one kind of parent in the asexual mode of reproduction whereas in the sexual mode of reproduction we need two parents which are sexually different we need in case of human we need male and female to re reproduce the young one in all the animals we see male and female whereas in some of the fungi we see that positive strain and negative strain this is sexuality of these two fungi high um, will be different one will be positive and another one will be negative and they both combine to form a zygospore so they will be sexually different so we need sexually different organisms we need two individuals for the sexual reproduction let us see the asexual mode of reproduction through fission so what happens in the fission what happens in the fission in the fission we see one organism will split into two organisms one organism will split into two organisms it it usually occurs in amoeba so fission we are going to first type of asexual reproduction is fission so in the fission there are two types of fission one is binary fission and another one is multiple fission binary fission and multiple fission as the word says here by means two one organism will split into two organisms that is in the binary fission whereas the word multiple says that one organism split into multiple young ones so it is occurring in the amoeba and leishmania example example is amoeba and leishmania so what happens one organism this particular organism will divide itself will will divide into two daughter cells so this daughter cell how do how this daughter cells are created so this particular organism will produce this contains dna dna is a hereditary molecule which is present in every cell okay so this cell replicates its, itself it makes this dna makes another one copy and the contents of i'll show in a diagrammatic way another one copy of dna is produced and this copy of dna moves to this cell and slowly it starts to divide and forms two cell one will be remaining and another one cell will be formed so we see that from a single cell there will be formation of two daughter cells see these two daughter cells are exactly same to this parent so the, we call them as clones of this parent cell these are these two cells are clones of the parent cell clone means exact copy of the parent so what are the examples amoeba and leishmania in case of multiple fission we see the example of plasmodium plasmodium vivax is a fossil organism of malaria okay this plasmodium looks like this and there will be development of small fragments in a single cell these are the dnas 
and each of the organisms comes out when it the cell ruptures and each one develops into individual so we see that multiple copies of the cell is formed whereas only two copies are formed here that's why we call it as binary fission whereas in case of plasmodium we say that multiple fission so let us revise once the first type of asexual reproduction is fission fission is of two types one is binary fission and another one is multiple fission in case of binary fission a parent cell will divide itself into two daughter cells which are exact copies of the parent cells and in case of multiple fission we see that multiple young ones multiple daughter cells are formed from a single parent this is a single parent from which multiple copies are formed the cell will rupture like this and many individuals are formed from a single cell this is called multiple fission example is plasmodium i'll write it here plasmodium plasmodium is the example for multiple fission whereas amoeba and leishmania are the example for binary fission next type of asexual reproduction is regeneration the example we are going to study is planaria so planaria somehow looks like this like a slipper when accidentally it is cut into two parts accidentally it is cut into two part each of this part for example this particular part the upper part will grow into full organism and this lower part the lower part will also grow into full organism like this so this is what we call as regeneration the cut part will regenerate into fuller organism that is called regeneration we see the example called planaria planaria is slipper shaped organism that we uh, that i have drawn on the board when accidentally it is cut into two parts each of this part will regenerate into a whole organism which is called as regeneration next we are going to study about budding in yeast budding in hydra there are two examples we are going to study budding in yeast and budding in hydra so in this case what happens a small bud will come out this is the third method of asexual reproduction that we are studying hydra looks like this they have a tentacles these are called tentacles after certain time they develops a small bud this small bud can completely grow into a full organism and it will get detached from the parent see this will grow into a fuller organism when it fully grows it will get detached from this parent and live separately so this is called budding first it develops into a small bud B bud will grow in size and it will grow into a fuller animal and it gets detached and lives separately this is called as budding in hydra okay this is hydra and these are called tentacles of hydra next we are going to study vegetative propagation vegetative propagation we see usually in the plants vegetative propagation we see usually in the plant the fourth type of asexual reproduction is vegetative propagation in the plants we can divide the parts into vegetative parts and reproductive parts usually the leaves the stem roots are vegetative parts of the plant and the flower is called reproductive plant part so the flower reproduces and uh, develops into seed which is called as reproductive which is we we, we are going to study in further uh, in the same chapter the, the parts of the plant can be divided into vegetative parts vegetative parts and reproductive parts which is the reproductive part the flower is the reproductive part flower and other than flower we see stems leaves rhizome etc and also the roots so these things are called vegetative uh, parts of the plant which are not involved in the reproduction so they they are not involved in the sexual reproduction that's why they are called as vegetative parts of the plant so these particular parts of the plants are involved to create the young one so they it is called as vegetative propagation for example you take the example of a rose plant where you will cut the stems and each of the stems grows into a full flower, full plant so we we propagate rose through the stem cuttings which is also called as vegetative propagation in the 
in the roses and when we take the examples of the leaves leaves in the bryophyllum the plant called bryophyllum leaves will grow into a full plant so leaves are also vegetative propagules the leaves are also called vegetative propagules so give an example for rhizomes and roots which will develop into a full plant so you are going to comment one plant which grows through rhizomes and also one plant which grows through roots and the next one is through spore formation through spore formation the sixth one sixth asexual reproduction through spore formation spore formation some of the fungi fungi is a organism which usually you see on the bread on the bread bread mold is a type of fungi when you, if you want to experiment in your home you can sprinkle some water on the bread and you can keep it in the shade so afterwards it grows it into a small propagules small matty structure white color will be developed on the on the bread which is called as fungi this is saprophyte so it depends on the dead and decaying material that's why it is considered as saprophyte so this particular fungi will reproduce through the spore formation so what happens it develops a sac sac like this which is called as sporangia spore bearing spore containing vessel is called sporangium this is called sporangium sporangium contains small round structures called spores these spores will come out when the sporangium will open when the sporangium will split open like this these spores will come out hope you are able to see me see the board these spores will come out and each of these spores are can develop into whole fungi colony or whole fungi structure okay so these spores each of them will develop into fungi so this spore formation is usually seen in the fungi okay this is the sixth type of asexual reproduction that we have studied so next class we are going to discuss about sexual reproduction in the organisms thank you